Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to start with chapter 8 of NCRT that is area related to circle. All of us know what are circles and we have been learning the parts of the circle. We know about the chords of the circle and I will be telling you about sector, arc, major arc, minor arc, diameter, radius and the other parts related to circle. Looking at the first diagram, the diameter is a straight line which is passing through the center of the circle and connecting two end points on a circle. And it is the longest chord of the circle. This is the chord of a circle. What is the difference between the chord and the diameter? A chord, all other chords except the diameter, they do not pass through the center. Diameter is the only chord which passes through the center. What is a chord? It is a straight line segment connecting two endpoints of a circle. So, a diameter is also a chord. Now, coming to the arc. Arc is a part of a circle, a part of the curvature. AB is an arc and AB connecting to the radius will give you two straight lines using the two radii and the corresponding arc a region is formed which is known as the sector the smaller region formed by the corresponding arc that is the minor arc and the region formed by the minor arc the smaller of the arc if you see as i told you that what is an arc it is a part of a circle, a part of the curvature. So, this AB is your arc. Also, this part of AB is also an arc. The, my, the smaller portion AB is the minor arc and the larger portion of the curvature is the major arc. A region which is formed by the minor arc and a pair of radii, it is known as minor sector and the region formed by a pair of radii and the major arc is known as major sector. Similarly, a segment is a region which is formed by a chord and the corresponding arc. So, if AB is the chord, the lower region is the minor segment and this portion is the major segment. So, we must have an idea about major and minor sector, major and minor segment before we move to the areas related to circle. Suppose we have a circle of radius 3 centimeters and the perimeter of the circle which is given by the circumference of the circle is 18.85 centimeter and since the radius is 3 centimeter diameter will be 6 centimeter. Let us look at the ratio between the circumference and the diameter. It is approaching to 3.14 approximately. Let us take another circle of radius 4 centimeter and let us find out its circumference that is 25.1. Again if I divide the circumference by diameter we say that the ratio is approaching to 3.14. So every time we are taking the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of any circle we get a fixed value 3.14. This fixed value 3.14 or the constant value is known as pi and that will be very helpful in finding out the area of the circle. Suppose we have a circle again with radius 3 cm and the circumference is 18.85, diameter is 6. We know circumference upon diameter will give me an approximate constant value 3.14. And we will also see that if I multiply this 3.14 with the diameter, we will get the circumference. The circumference of a circle is pi into diameter. 
that is 2r. Hence, we get the formula for circumference as 2 pi r. The same can be seen with another circle. It holds true for all the circles. The approximate value of pi can be taken as 3.14 or 22 upon 7. Children, let me tell you, we must wisely use the value of pi in doing any question. If the radius or the diameter is a multiple of 7, then use the fraction 22 upon 7 for a smoother and easier calculation. Otherwise, use 3.14. You can use 3.14 anywhere, but if you want your calculation to be easier, just go wisely. Look at the diameter and the radius. If the diameter and the radius is a multiple of 7, then it is always better to use 22 upon 7 as the value of pi. Now, what is pi r square? We must have heard about it last year also that it is the area of a circle but how do we get this area how do we get this formula where does it come from suppose we have a circle and we divide it into very small sectors here i have divided the circle into four sectors i cut the four sectors and arrange it in the form of a rectangle i try to arrange it when i arrange it i see it is not resembling a rectangle, it is resembling a parallelogram with a curved side on the top, not exactly a parallelogram also. Again, I try to divide the circle into more finer sector with more number of sectors. I have increased the number of sectors and I again arrange the sectors. It is somewhat looking like a rectangle but not exactly. If I continue this process by dividing the circle into more and more and more sectors, gradually arranging these sectors in a row will give me a rectangle. If I divide my circle into very fine sectors, into n number of sectors, if I go on increasing the number of sectors, Finally, arranging those sectors in a row will take the form of a rectangle. The area of the rectangle and the area of the circle in this case will be equivalent because I got these sectors from the circle. I got this arrangement from the circle. Now, how to calculate the area of a rectangle? We know the area of a rectangle is base into height. The area of this circle is same as the area of this rectangle and the area of the is equal to base into height. But what is the base of this rectangle and what is the height of the rectangle? The base of the rectangle, how did I get the rectangle? There were small sectors. So, this curved part, this curved part, so this is pi r. Why pi r? Because this pi r plus this pi r will complete the entire circumference. This part will constitute the half of the rectangle. And this curved part will constitute the half of the rectangle. And this height is nothing but the radius of the circle. So, substituting the value in place of base, if I put pi r, and in place of height, if I put r, I get the area of the circle as pi r square. I get the area of the circle as pi r square to watch the complete video download the upbind educational app from play store and app store